One thing that a lot of people approach us about is about using metal 3D printing to make injection molds uh, because injection molding has such a, a reputation for being expensive and time consuming. Um, I think Ken actually wanted to introduce the 3D printing application of the month that has to do with injection mold. Sure. So, yeah, you're you're leading into uh, metal injection molding or not not metal injection molding, but metal molds. Um, Can we do it? Very small ones, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, typically, when people are looking at at metal molds, you're talking more about production molds, and you're specifically targeting very controlled cooling channels. So, if you think about how you manufacture a cooling channel today, if you look at most models, they're just straight cuts. Someone's drilling straight through the mold. So, the theory is, oh, if I can make cooling channels that number one get very close to my mold the actual mold i don't know what's called mold surface the internal surface, yeah. cavity. internal mold cavity i'll buy that and i can almost mimic that that geometry i'm not limited by having to cut a straight line i can get really close and i can almost go right up against that surface i can cool better and i can make more parts quicker okay the 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 one I the topic I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about was actually the prototype injection molding, and even more specifically using the polyjet technology. We can use FDM for this, but people tend to go towards polyjet due to the surface finish. Same with like SLA, same reasoning, just the surface quality. But I think you, there's a lot of surprise to how much you can actually get out of some of these polyjet molds. I think first thing it's important to note that. These things, with, when you use the correct materials, can withstand up to about 300 Celsius. So when we're at or below 300 Celsius, we're, we're pretty good. Um, what are you shooting at? Like, what material would you be shooting at that range? Yeah, so there's a couple different kinds. You can do elastomers are the best fit. I know probably the most common would be what? Polypropylene is the one I, I hear most. Does polypropylene great. is the it one that's... that's <laughs> yeah, I've heard most frequently... I've heard people getting in the hundreds, hundreds of parts of that. And with all molds in general, a lot of the quantities and the, the upper limits of what it can do are really going to come down to the geometry that there's going to be limits on there. But we've done elastomers. We've done your some of your standard plastics like ABS and uh, PC ABS. Those tend to be a little bit less than the, the elastomers. So if elastomers are 100 shot of mold, um, standard plastics, you might be closer to 75 or 50. And then when you start getting to some of the engineering grade materials like glass filled, that's when you're only going to start seeing a couple parts. So really the, the more wear and tear that that material causes on the mold when injecting it, it's not necessarily that you're going to destroy the mold as much as you're going to start losing tolerance. And that's really the reason you can't have hundreds and hundreds of shots of glass filled material. Um, so but you're outside, pushing melted plastic into the mold and the mold doesn't melt yes believe it or not <laughs> so why because you're still under the actual melting point of the mold okay so one of the important things though is that when you're using 3d printed molds and as i said it's it's primarily for for prototyping you're gonna have to make some changes compared to a traditional mold you can't just take an immediate designed for a steel or aluminum mold and, and print it out and expect it to work perfectly. Some of the, the, the most common things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to increase the draft angle. That's just going to let the part come out of the mold easier because plastic on plastic interface is going to be more resistant than aluminum. The second part is going to be the time. So when you think of injection molding, you think of someone shooting into the mold, opening it, popping the part out, closing it, shooting into the mold and repeating. You're talking one to two second cycle times, three, four second cycle times. When you're in the prototype stage though, when, when using printed molds, typically we're talking maybe a minute per shot because you have to allow the mold to come back down and cool so that it doesn't overheat and melt. It doesn't have that heat resistance that an aluminum would. And then finally, the only other, only other thing that is recommended when using specifically the polyjet molds is they tend to be a little bit smaller. So we're talking like 10 cubic inches of total mass in your in your mold cavity. 10 cubic inches is pretty big. 
it's pretty big, and even in, in injection molding, it's a good size. But we're not we're not going to create injection molds that are, I don't know, a third of a door panel or <laughs> big big parts. Can you so? You've been talking this whole time about polyjet parts. What's the advantage to making a mold in polyjet versus an FDM mold? The biggest, the biggest advantage is surface finish. Because um, you're not going to buy and you're not going to ha- have the lines of the the model from the FDF, FDM FDM machine. Correct. Yes. So the the layer lines of a, a polyjet molder are much 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 smaller. Um, we can do pretty much naturally off the machine. You get a, a glossier surface finish, so it's better for the mold release. Um, I would say the only downside for Polyjet relative to uh, FDM is when you're talking about some of those even like really big blow mold or really big, fairly simple geometry molds. Materials like Altem and PEC, like some of those really high temperature FDM materials. If you can sand down the surface and make it a nice surface, they'll work better. But for most applications, when you don't need those extreme temperatures or, or big sizes, Polyjet's the better way to go because of its fine feature detail. Good to know. And so what would be the advantage of making a Polyjet mold over an aluminum mold? So there's really two... A couple key things when when you look at an injection molding shop there's not a lot of room for prototyping because if you don't have any way to prototype the mold other than maybe if it's simple enough making it out of wood you have to go and get that mold made out of a cnc so you have to commit to a metal mold to start the challenge there is is metal molds for injection molding can be very expensive so ranging anywhere from a few thousand to hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on their complexity. Some of our customers will use the molds to do short runs. So if you only need 10 parts, that's not something your injection mold company would normally even take on because cost per part would be ridiculous. But maybe if they can get 20, 30 parts off a plastic mold and they have equal quality, you can take on those five or 10 job orders to get those larger larger deals in the same package. Um, but more common, I would say, it's really foolproofing your metal mold. So it's a lot more reassuring to spend $800 on a plastic mold and find out that you made a mistake or find out that something's wrong with the mold there before you've committed to the $50,000 six-week lead time metal mold or whatever your lead time is for your, your company. But Knowing that when you go and commit to the very expensive object, you know it'll work right away, and there's no questions about that. So you could be spending more in the upfront prototyping process, but you're completely taking away the risk of a a full metal mold commitment. Does it really cost that much for a metal mold? It just depends on the complexity and size. Um, I know the example, I don't know if I can... We can share the picture of the example, but I believe the the example part we have, the mold, is only about four and a half inches long, mildly complex with thin walls. I think that one they quoted for about $50,000. That is so like expensive jet. for a small mold. It's just... It's a lot. No. Um, <laughs> you could buy yeah, the new Polyjet printer and just do your own that cost yes but at at the same time if i'm gonna make five thousand ten thousand parts i still want a metal mold (laughs) or if i'm gonna be making five thousand ten thousand parts a month i want a metal mold (laughs) because if i'm on if i'm only gonna get 200 300 shots off the plastic one okay now i'm spending thousands and thousands you're gonna spend more than that metal mold and just making smaller molds The other part is when you start to get closer and closer to the limit of your mold, you are going to start seeing it degrade. So if you're, if you're in high tolerance situations, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be pushing a plastic mold to its limits. If you're, if you're trying to hold six, seven, eight thou. (laughs) So 3d printers make plastic parts and injection molds make plastic parts. How do you know whether you should, make an injection mold or just print the parts? 
Is that for me? Yes, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> You're the um, one telling us about injection molds. <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, it depends on what you're trying to to gain from the part. Um, if you're just trying to test the design of the part and see if you like the form, fit, or function of the part, you might be better off just printing the part itself. But if you're evaluating the mold design or if you're evaluating like the feasibility of the mold, then you might look to actually printing the mold over printing a part. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, related to, to injection molding, um, this is our, our only uh, COVID-related topic for today. <laughs> um, but I wanted to, to end on our, our 3D printing tip of the month to give some tips on how people can 3D print faster. 